Welcome to Religion 100. Uh, this is a course called the Introduction to Religion. And um, you're going to have a little bit different experience in this course than you have in a regular classroom course. As a matter of fact, potentially you might never go into a classroom to take this course. Um, I'll talk more about um, the format and the logistics of the course here in a little bit, the details of it. But I want to do a few things on an introductory uh, level or introduction level first. Um, my name is Laura Hobbs. I've taught in the Religious Studies Department since the late 1980s. And I've worked with this course uh, since day one when I began teaching in the department. And so I, this is still probably one of my favorite courses to teach because of the range of topics that it covers. And they tend to be topics that about anybody's interested in. Now, certainly you won't find interest in every topic we discuss, but I think there'll be some lectures that will click in with you. And most students feel like this is a pretty good, broad way to look at religion and talk about some different aspects of religion. So um, it's a course that, again, I'll tell you a little bit more about here in a little bit. Um, as I said, I've taught here since the late 1980s. Um, I teach this course. I typically teach a course on women and religion. Sometimes I teach a course on religion and the news, um, and then some different formats of this Religion 100 course. I uh, do more than just teach, though. Um, I, I'll introduce myself to you a little bit as far as uh, some things when I'm not here on campus. Uh, I own a small farm outside of Springfield, and I'll introduce you to some of the critters that are on that farm. Um, I even got some slides here for you to look at, some photos. Uh, these first few are uh, Roscoe, my very large golden retriever who lets me live in the house with him. And then uh, the next few here are um, one of my uh, four horses, at least at the time of the taping of this. Um, this first one is, is Foxy. She's a Foxtrotter Tennessee Walker. And then um, the white horse there is Patty Jo. She's the matriarch of the pasture and the mother of Jack, who is in these next few slides. Uh, he's a young colt of mine that, again, at the time of the taping of this, I'm kind of finishing out as far as breaking him, beginning to ride him as a two-year-old. Um, and then um, I also have some other animals that support the horse habit. As far as the horses, I trail ride and stuff. I don't do anything that makes any money with the horses. And so to pay for the horses, I uh, raise South African boar goats. And so uh, that's what some of these next photos are of some of those kids. Um, you come on around, you'll see that uh, there's one goat here. There's three kids there that I'm holding. Uh, her name's Twa because she usually always has three kids, although I sold her just recently. And when she went to these other people's house, she had four kids, which Two or three is typical with these kind of goats. Um, so my life keeps pretty exciting. We're trying to take care of all those animals and others beyond those on the pictures. Um, and that kind of keeps me humble to scoop a little manure every day before I come into the university and uh, teach. Well, let me talk about um, Religion 100 a little bit. Basically, again, this is an introductory course. So a lot of times when I think about Religion 100, I think about it um, it's almost like a speedboat going across the surface of the field of religion. Uh, we're going to cover a broad uh, territory in this class, but probably not any territory in great depth. Um, as an introductory course, um, I can say to you that uh, we, have a, we have a whole department of religious studies. We have a ma uh, you can get a minor, you can get a major, you can get a master's degree, and we have a couple of different types of masters that you can get through the department. And so we offer many classes. Uh, so if there's any of these topics in this class that you find of interest and you wish we could have gone more deeply into, that is possible. Uh, you can probably take that as a two or three or 500 level course within our department. And so I'd invite you to come back and try some other courses uh, after this one. But what Religion 100 covers is, is first of all, at the beginning, we'll just talk about what religion is. Uh, ways that people define religion. Uh, we'll look at some different theorists and different perspectives and how they think about religion. We'll talk about what religion does in people's lives and in society. We'll talk about why people are religious. Um, we'll talk about what different religious systems believe and do and the motivations behind the things that they do. 
Um, and we'll also talk about how religion plays out in real life today. Uh, some of the kinds of things that you find in religion and the media today, whether it's um, religion in, in the Ozarks, or uh, religion and ethics and how that interacts, or uh, how religions are interacting with each other in the world today. But we'll talk about how it's playing out in real life today. Um, this particular course, this interactive CD course, um, as far as the resources that you will use in this course, um, they include these. Uh, first of all, you need to go to the bookstore uh, here at Missouri State if you have not already and uh, you need to purchase the CD-ROM set for this course. Uh, that's your way to get the lectures, to get the assignments, to uh, find the things on the web that you're linking to, but you need to get the, C the CD set. You also need to get the selected readings for the course. Um, it'll look something like this. It'll say Religion 100 Selected Readings. It'll have my name down at the bottom as one of the people that, um, that put the packet together. Uh, but you will need this. And then also you'll need the textbook that's listed in your syllabus for this course. Now there is um, in your syllabus, in addition to the CDs, the selected reading packet, and your textbook, there's an optional or recommended text, Religion of Preface by John Wilson. That is very much an optional text. I include it for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that it's the text which this class is, is largely built around. As a matter of fact, the author of the text, John Wilson, used to teach here at Missouri State, and he's who designed this course, and that's the text that he used with the, with the course. Um, so the course is largely built around that book, which may lead you to ask, so why isn't that our textbook? And um, really the main reason is because of cost. As they've done uh, later editions of the book, um, I'm guessing they're not uh, distributing as many as they did with the first edition. And so I, th I think that the price has gotten a bit exorbitant for an introductory course. So um, that's the main reason I use it for textbooks, because I, I think it costs more than what um, I need to ask you to pay, considering you have to buy some other things for this class. So you generally what I tell students is, if, um, if you're not getting it with my lectures, if I'm not making sense to you, or if you're someone that just likes to give things double coverage, or as I often say, if you're somebody that you wear both a belt and a pair of suspenders to keep your pants up, then you might want that book. Otherwise, you probably don't. There's nothing from that that is unique for the course or as what you're probably most concerned about for tests. Um, but if you want extra coverage or my stuff I'm saying isn't making sense, you might want that as a supplemental text. So you need those things for resources. A second resource that you have available in addition to the text and the CD-ROMs is Blackboard, the course management system that we use here at Missouri State. Um, I will enroll you in the course in Blackboard if you have an account. If you don't have an account, you need to contact one of the computer labs at Missouri State and set yourself up with a Blackboard account. But um, then I'll enroll you in the course. The things then that that course management system will be used for is um, the grade book is kept on that, so you can check grades, make sure things are there, make sure it's recorded accurately, and just know what your grade is. Um, a copy of the syllabus will be on Blackboard. Um, a, a materials packet that gives hard copy instructions for all the assignments. It contains study guides. Um, any supplemental materials are, are in that materials packet. Um, also, I use Blackboard to send out any uh, group emails. So if you're somebody that you don't typically use your Missouri State account that's, that's linked to Blackboard, while you're in this course, I would encourage you at least once a week or so to check that so that you don't miss out on communications because any emails that I send you will go to whatever email account is associated with your Blackboard account. Um, also, uh, you will be able to do, do your testing online, and those are done, those tests again are done through Blackboard. So um, that's a major resource that you have available to you um, in this class. Um, another resource that you have available uh, is the internet or the web, as directed um, in the lectures or on the CDs. And so um, 
most of you probably have some sort of a web or internet connection, but you'll definitely want to have that as you watch the lectures because there will be times that there will be links uh, from the lectures to something on the web, something on the internet, or possibly something on Blackboard. So you need that connection. And then uh, finally, again, uh, probably the, mo the kinds of contact that you and I will have with each other will primarily be email contact. If you're on campus, I'd be happy for you to come by and introduce yourself to me because it's kind of weird for me to have these students that I don't even know what you look like or anything. So I'm happy for you to come by my office anytime, um, but email is probably going to be our main source of contact. Again, if I initiate email with you, it will be to your Missouri State email account. So uh, as I said earlier, make sure you check that regularly while you're in this course so you don't miss any important communication. So you need those things to take this course. And so make sure you got all that stuff lined up. Then the basic format of the course is this. Um, once you have all your resources, then you'll begin watching the lectures on the CDs that you'll purchase from the bookstore. Um, any readings um, and any writing assignments are made um, on that CD. And so sometimes they're mentioned within the course of the lecture, but also be, there's a section on the CD that you can go to where I explain assignments to you. So if you want to hear it from me, um, see me giving you the instructions, that's on CD. Instructions for assignments are also in the materials packet that you have available to you. And you'll be able to access that um, through the CD as well as through Blackboard. Um, what you need to do is set up your schedule for viewing lectures and completing assignments for the class. Um, you, you'll be given at the beginning of the semester um, with your syllabus the dates of the exams. But it's up to you to know if my first exam is in six weeks then and I've got you know 12 lectures or however many to watch you're the one that needs to make sure you get those lectures watched in the time frame to do that. Also in the syllabus uh, you'll be told when various assignments are due. Um, you have a couple of essays and a project in this course. Uh, one of the essays and one of the projects is due at your first two exams, uh, but you also have an essay that you need to get to me before your first exam. Uh, the essays can be turned into me through the digital Dropbox on Blackboard. Um, the, the project that you'll do, because it involves uh, newspaper articles and stuff like that, will have to be turned into me directly, either dropped by my office or um, mailed to me in the mail. Not email, but in snail mail. Um, so make sure you set up your schedule for when things are due, when the tests are, and when you need to watch lectures for that to happen. Um, generally, with students that have taken these kinds of classes before, sometimes I'll have them give advice to other students if, if they do come to the initial class meeting. And um, experienced students, when I say, what advice do you give to students who've never taken this kind of class before, the first thing they always say is, don't get behind don't watch all the lectures the night before the exam. <laughs> um, that's what's, what's easy to do in a course like this is procrastinate, procrastinate, procrastinate because you don't have me reminding you constantly of what you need to do. You're, you're very much on your own, you're self-directed. But you have dates that you need to shoot for as far as exams and assignments. So make sure you set those up, give yourself a schedule, and try to stay pretty close to that as much as you can. As far as turning in assignments, um, again, the first two assignments are typed essays. Both of those, um, can, they can be dropped by my office, um, or you can turn them in on Blackboard through the digital Dropbox. And on Blackboard, um, you, generally you get a course tools, and then that takes you to the digital Dropbox, and it's menu driven. So if you've got the document saved on your computer, it'll talk you through how to download that. Uh, make sure your name is what's there with the assignment as I pull those up, so I can see it as I pull it up. Again, the third assignment is a project that either will have to be dropped off at my office, 
that's the newspaper project that's during the second unit, or uh, snail mail to me. And the address that you would mail that to is on the first page of your syllabus. As far as testing procedures for the class, um, there, I will be giving online exams. If people prefer to come take an in-class exam, I, I'll offer that option to you and I'll have you let me know within a week or 10 days of each exam if you plan to do that. But otherwise, there are online exams that you'll take through Blackboard. Uh, so the week of that exam, I'll send you the information you need, the password, all of that to take the online exam. The online exams are offered at the same time of the, of the class meeting time. So if, if this class, for instance, meets at 6.30 some evening, and that's when the exam is scheduled for, then the online exam is at 6.30 on that evening. I don't make it available for a week or for a day or anything. I make it available for the time frame of the class. Um, the first two exams, there's also the option to take that exam on the Saturday before or after the exam if our time doesn't work and that you'd have to come to campus to do that. But as each exam approaches, I'll send you an email that lets you know your options for taking the exam and then ask you to let me know what your um, plan is in response to those options. As far as picking up any assignments that you turn into me, uh, once a grade is recorded for an assignment, uh, when you find that record on Blackboard, uh, I'll leave all graded assignments in the Religious Studies office, which is in Strong Hall, number 251. And you can go there, tell them that you need to pick up an assignment for Laura Hobbs' religion video course, and they should have um, a box or a file or something with those in it for you to pick up. Um, the other thing that you can do if you're one of those people that you really are going to do this distance and not be on campus or, you know, you're in Wichita, Kansas and you're not around to take it is uh, sometime near the end of the sem semester, send me a large self-addressed self stamped um, envelope which would have sufficient postage to cover sending you whatever I need to send you and um, I'll mail you everything after the semester is over, but only if you provide the envelope and the postage for that to happen. Um, I want to urge you not to get behind. I want to urge you to stay in contact with me if uh, you get lost, you get confused about things. If, if something doesn't make sense to you, don't go, well, I'll check on that later, because you probably won't. And over time, uh, you might get yourself dug into a hole that's hard to get out of. So uh, keep up, keep in communication with me, check your bear mail, and um, you know, if, if you stay up, the t students who are self-disciplined stay up with this course, um, tend to do pretty well in this type of course because you can kind of study at the time that works best for you. You can watch lectures at the time that works best for you. Um, the students who struggle are the students who don't keep up. So I want to encourage you to practice a little self-discipline and I think you'll have a good experience uh, with this course, Religion 100. <laughs>